Hello everyone, and welcome to my General Hospital YouTube channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribers button and give this video a thumbs up. While Jocelyn assists an understaffed Carly in closing Bobby's, she voices her disdain of her mother's actions with Sonny. She reluctantly concedes that this is true, but she finds it difficult to understand Carly jeopardizing everything for a man she doesn't think would return the favor. Brennan enters Robert's office as he and Felicia are having supper. Felicia accepts his handshake with a chilly demeanor. Brennan is under pressure from her and Robert to confirm that Jason and Anna have spoken to the person holding Lucky prisoner, but it is the only information he can provide. Felicia questions why she initially assisted Jason and Anna. Brennan says that's because the Bureau owes Luke money, and Lucky is Luke's son. Felicia questions why it would benefit him. He smugly says, Your goodwill is plenty, and walks away. Brennan approaches Robert in his office and extends his hand to Felicia, who is standing next to him but is not responding. Since the Brown Dog Bar isn't the type of location to get cocktails, Molly walks in and gets a straight bourbon. She glances at her ultrasound with regret and then leaves TJ a voicemail. When Dex gets there, he sits down next to her to listen. She sobs as she confides in him, letting go of all the dreams she had for her child. TJ and Curtis meet in the deserted Savoy. How he and Molly can't seem to find a good excuse to remain apart bothers him. Though nothing has changed in reality between them, it feels like everything has. Curtis remembers how, as he was getting his mobility back, he pushed Portia away and kept to himself. Although it let him feel in control, it was detrimental to every aspect of his life. Although TJ doesn't want to lose Molly, he is beginning to believe that he has no control over it. Even though they have a long history together, it might not be sufficient to ensure their future. Brooke Lynn in the quarter main kitchen tosses a big bowl over baking trays. Geo gestures toward them. Geo discovers Brooke Lynn baking brownies for Violet's school function in the Q kitchen. She wants the young child to know how much she is cherished and cared for. She sounds just like his mother. Geo says. Brooke Lynn gives a guarded smile. They then reminisce about his mother in a pleasant way. He talks about how wonderful and patient she was, just like Chase and Brooklyn are with Violet. He is aware of how fortunate their children will be to have them. Brooklyn mentions they're working on it, albeit haltingly. Brad was rehired at the lab a month ago, Portia finds out during her visit with Terry at the hospital. Terry is back, and Portia can't believe he didn't tell her. Even better, why hadn't she stopped it? Terry argues for his work performance to date. Portia alerts him that she will be watching him closely. He disappears the moment he crosses the boundary. Elizabeth and Willow talk about how Lucky is being sought after in a hazardous area in the hopes that he may match Lulu's donor. Willow observes that Drew assisted her in that way. Willow is raving about Drew's bravery and compassion, and Liz hears this discreetly. Carly says she's at Bobby's to help Sonny for Donna and Avery, but she's not going to be committed to him long term. Joss cites historical evidence, which is more easily said than done. Brennan strolls in. Joss finds out he attempted to kidnap Carly when Carly introduced him to her. Carly explains that he is the new manager of the Port Charles de Lesby office and that there was a mistake. After Joss leaves, Brennan briefs Carly on how he helped Jason and Anna discover Lucky. She declines to discuss Sonny when he asks about him. He's okay with that because he'd rather not talk about the past or his ex. He enjoys being present in the moment. Terry and Elizabeth cross paths in the hospital. She tells her brother Stephen got out of prison and is going to Sedona. She doesn't think he'll go to Port Charles to avoid Heather. Terry asks Elizabeth if she believes Heather is deserving of another shot. Elizabeth isn't certain that she does. Terry queries Brad, whose referral originated with her. Elizabeth believes that Terry's faith in Brad could be sufficient to change him. Molly tells Dex that court is her happy place after gathering herself at the bar. It makes the most logic and is organized, except for the court when she is the person she wants to be. She feels like she is spinning everywhere. 
Robert and Felicia discuss Brennan's assistance with Lucky at Robert's office. Is he attempting to gain favor with the WSB or another party? Felicia implies that he's Carly acting and on Carly's talk about their past at Bobby's. Though he was glad of her companionship, he cheekily admits that their early meetings were mainly set up. That is not false in the slightest. He no longer desires anything from her, though. Nothing to do with bureaucracy, anyway. Portia informs Trina at Café Sherry that Heather's lab results show her levels were the same before and after her surgery. Thus, her hip replacement had nothing to do with her cobalt poisoning. Trina doesn't know how she came to have dangerously high blood cobalt levels at that time. Whatever the reason, which Portia is ignorant of, she will never leave Pentonville. Trina feels liberated at last, as if a burden has been removed. Happy that everything are going according to plan, Portia breaks down in tears. She remembers altering Heather's cobalt level readings from 1.8 to 300 in the past. What a day we never thought would arrive. At last, Stephen is free from jail on General Hospital. His half-sis Elizabeth dropped that little information on the Monday, September 23rd episode, assuring Terry that he was free and heading directly for Arizona. We were beginning to believe that since he had been imprisoned for almost 12 years, they had simply locked him up and thrown away the key. For those who don't know, Stephen Lars Weber is the son of Jeff Weber, Liz's father, and Heather, our favorite metal poisoning murderer. Fun fact, Heather's personality can be somewhat attributed to Stephen. If he hadn't been born, Heather could still be sane, not that whatever she did was his fault at all. However, probably not. When Jeff had an affair with a cunning, Soon to be crazy nanny in the 1970s, Stephen Lars was born. The doctor was married to Monica at the time, but because she was preoccupied with having an affair with Jeff's brother, Rick, don't feel too sorry for her. General Medical Facility Robin Matthews in the picture of Heather Weber when Heather was younger and still sane, she was portrayed by Robin Matson. Credit. ABC. Everett Collection Courtesy. Heather was advised by Jeff to get an abortion in order for him to remain married to Monica, but instead, she sold Stephen to Peter and Diana Taylor, the couple she had been working as a nanny for, in private. Nevertheless, Jeff and Monica ended up divorcing. After Heather eventually wed Jeff, she attempted to drive his adoptive mother insane by giving her some LSD poisoning because she wanted her kid back. Rather, Heather made a mistake drank the spiked drink, and hasn't stopped being crazy. The truth took a while to surface, but once Jeff knew Stephen was his and that both of his adoptive parents had passed away, the doctor returned his baby to Jeff to raise as his own and protect him from Heather. The child grew up off-screen, went on to become a doctor, and vanished from view until 2004 when he reappeared as an adult and was portrayed by Sean Benson. Shortly after becoming confused with Carly and John Durant, he left. He reappeared in 2009, this time portrayed by Scott Reeves, and Monica appointed him chief of staff at the hospital. Following a disastrous relationship with the insane Lisa Niles, Steve and Olivia ended up in the same bus accident. The two quickly became engaged and even made plans to tie the knot, but when Maggie, Stephen's Memphis ex-girlfriend, moved to the area, everything fell apart. Before long, word spread that Steve had slain a life-sentenced, convicted killer to obtain his organs for a transplant-waiting teenage patient. After being honest with Olivia, everything appeared to be going well. However, later on, Steve was coerced by Johnny Zakara into assisting him in the illegal organ trade. Johnny turned him up to the police for the Memphis murder when he finally refused. However, about the time Heather was discharged from Ferncliff, Mommy Dearest attempted to support her son by killing Maggie and accusing her of killing the transplant victim. Although Heather does occasionally talk about her son, her most recent comment felt particularly poignant in light of the news that Steve has been released from prison. The episode also made it rather evident that he was not returning to Port Charles at this time. Liz claims that he won't likely go to avoid his mother. And we get it because, as we probably should have added, 
We also gave Olivia an LSD injection, attempted to make her commit suicide, and, when that failed, kept her at knife point until she stabbed her own kid, who was rushing to her aid. However, everything might alter if Heather manages to redeem herself and people discover that Portia falsified her test results. What do you think? Will Stephen Lars ever go back to Port Charles now that he's free? Would you be interested in seeing Liz's brother return? So what do you guys think about this update? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my videos, please press like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.